So real quick, just give me an update on what's been happening in Seattle. The Arctic destroyer did leave. Uh, give me an update on that and what the upcoming actions you have planned are. What happened with the, when the big rig left was really there were two actions. Greenpeace had an action that they did um, that uh, a line across the, the Duwamish that was cut almost immediately. And then, um, and then we had the flotilla behind that. And um, uh, we uh, we didn't get as much time to mobilize people as we wanted to, but um, we had still had dozens of really courageous folks who were out there on the water, and uh, it was uh, uh, it was intense uh, because we had this gigantic rig, you know, and these big tugboats coming at us, which we didn't think we were going to have. We thought we were going to be holding space and keeping them from untying, and then the the Coast Guard actually allowed them to untie and come right at us. So that was, um, that was a little shocking, and we, but we learned a lot. Um, we also learned a lot about our own capacity and the difference between um, actions where, that need surprise and actions that need mobilization. So, you know, Greenpeace had an action that needed surprise, but we had an action that needed mobilization. And, uh, and we didn't need surprise. We could have been pumping people out there for you know, 48 hours, and it would work great, way better probably. So um, uh, there were some uh, trade-offs that weren't really, didn't really uh, work out that great for the local people. And we went up and we did light projection on it. We tried to add some other tech, uh, the, the shell no light panels one night. So that was interesting, do night paddling again and uh, do some, you know, on-water uh, tactics. That was cool. And so when we heard it would leave, we had uh, an imp- uh, about 20 people in the water, uh, 15 kayaks and, and our support boat. And again, you know, it's just amazing because you're out in the most beautiful place, you know, in the Puget Sound, out in during sunrise. And it's it's gorgeous, but it's tragic at the same time because you've got these ships coming at you and uh, and, the, uh, and the, uh, the police boats and the Coast Guard and it's just really freaking challenging. It's it's hard, and uh, and it's so beautiful, and people are so beautiful. The people who went out there are really super courageous, and they paddle in, and you know, and then they take they take a penalty. They get pulled out of their kayak. You know, the, the Coast Guard is pretty good at this, and the and the Coast Guard and the police. So we've got some work to do, and that's really um, you know where we're at now. I think people need rest. Uh, we've had some celebration recently. That's been good. People are regrouping. There's a lot of grief, uh, and there's sh- and there should be a lot of uh, uh, acknowledgement of the kind of work that we've all done together and how much courage it took to do what we did do. Because right now, now there's kayak activists in Denmark. I mean. When was the last time we did an action and then all of a sudden it starts blossoming all over the world? You know, it's beautiful. I think this whole kayak activism thing, the being on the water, such a spiritual experience anyway, uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's, it was, it was a big, it was a huge success. Uh, it's made our movement stronger. And we brought a lot of new folks in and uh, we lo- learned a lot of skills. So our next step really is going to action camp on uh, August 11th through the 17th, when we do localize this action camp, uh, we'll have a really strong uh, track that is just dealing with on-water action, and we'll be able to uh, innovate some more tactics that people have been talking about and get ready for the next time that we get to utilize uh, Kai activists. To learn more about Shell No and to get involved via their coalition of organizations, visit shellno.org. <laughs>